How long has this activism been a part of your life? When did it start? What set you on fire? It started in the... It started right before the Quincentennial. It started in 1990. The Quincentennial, which is the 500-year celebration of Columbus coming to this country in 1992, is really where I started becoming a, a human rights activist. My work has reflected issues that affect all people, but mostly Native American people, and the issues that are unique to us that other people that don't affect other people and other other people in this country. And, and for say, example, you say, "Well, what could that be?" Well, issues like repatriation. We've had to recreate ceremonies to bring our ancestors' remains home from museums and we bury them in the ground. Issues of sovereignty. There are three forms of government that are recognized in this country. There's federal, state, and tribal. We are nations unto ourselves that enter into a nation-to-nation -nation agreement with um, other governments. Um, we have gaming issues. That, that would be casinos because we are sovereign nations. We have the highest rates of uh, drug-related and alcohol-related attempted suicide of any other group of people. And we also have domestic violence stats that are off the charts. We have issues that are in, we have, we have teams, sports teams named after us. Um, we have, we have movies made about us. We have all kinds of interpretations of our culture. We have sweat lodges in a box that you can buy on eBay. We have issues that are unique to us that need to be, that we need to make audiences aware of. And a lot of times, people can't appreciate these issues because we are portrayed as cartoon characters every day. Tell me a little bit about your art, your uh, mission, and your technique. I'm a multimedia artist that's been, that's been supporting myself with my work for over 30 years. But in 2008, I had an idea to create a piece of work that had to do with sovereignty. But instead of using the photography and the painting and the glasswork that I had become known for, I decided to use a traditional medium that I became aware of as a young woman working with my tribe's uh, mutual cooperative. While I was working at this arts and crafts cooperative, I became exposed to the traditional arts of the Cherokee, including basket making. I was hired by the Indian Arts and Crafts Board to create about 20 pen and ink drawings that illustrated traditional Cherokee basket designs. When I was working on these drawings, I became convinced that I could create a basket. But it wasn't until 2008 that I had an idea that really lent itself to using this genre for a medium. I'm working with baskets, but instead of using the traditional white oak and river cane, I'm using paper. On this Arches watercolor paper, I print photographs, treaties, letters, maps. Sometimes I print the same image twice and cut the splints with one image this way and the other, the other print this way and weave them together. In this way, I'm recreating statements and literally reweaving history. This is the first set that I'd like to talk about. This is a set of three baskets that is an homage to three warriors that traveled to England in 1762 with the help of Lieutenant Henry Timberlake. Timberlake was dispatched by the British government to really do internal intelligence with the Cherokee and try to smooth over British and Cherokee relations. While, while he was with the Cherokee, these three young leaders decided they wanted to meet this King George that he had been talking about, and so they asked him to arrange their journey to go and meet the monarch. However, on their trip, the interpreter died, and they didn't have any way to talk to anybody once they got there. The British society, however, was so enchanted with the beautiful clothing that the men wore, the exotic appearance, their obvious oration skills, even though nobody could understand what they were saying that they became convinced that they were in the presence of royalty. For these baskets, I am using for my models three friends of mine who are contemporary people. They are members of the warriors of the Anikidua, which traditionally would have been the front line of defense for the Cherokee people. 
In a contemporary way, though, these men are ambassadors for the Cherokee Nation, and they are actually um, contemporary role models within my tribe. They're wearing their traditional 18th century clothing, so this is really similar to the clothing that these men would have worn on their travels. Um, this series speaks about their journey. It speaks about, about how they were received by British society. Britons were completely enchanted with these men. They followed their every move. They became celebrities of the day. In fact, they were written about in every, every day in the newspapers and the magazines of the time. And so the interior of this basket uses reproductions of the articles that were appeared daily about the, the men. And I've also woven the royal coat of arms on the interior. The pattern that I wove this basket has two names. It's called the river and the mountain. It's called water and mountain pattern. You can see it's kind of a zigzag. But I chose this pattern because I wanted to symbolize the mountains that they came from, but the great water that they crossed to make this journey. So the name of this series is called They Were Called Kings. How does your baskets address that issue? What do you think they do? What happens when people well, hear these stories? For 30 years, when I would create work that would address these issues, it felt more like a lecture. And people don't like lectures. People don't like being lectured to it. It's, you know, visually, I could see a lot of my audience wrapping barbed wire around themselves, you know, and doing this. But something different has happened with baskets. You know, when I'm showing a basket, you can literally see people leaning in and wanting to know more. They want to know about the title. They want to know about the technique. They want to know about the design. They want to know about the statement. You know, I spent three decades trying to find a genre where, that would be the vehicle to create this dialogue. You know, these baskets are paper. These baskets, I don't see how they're going to be around in 500 years. It's not like a pottery shard. It's not like a knife that people are going to dig up. It's not like an arrowhead. They're paper. These baskets are important now because they're creating this springboard for honest dialogue. They're creating this dialogue so people can understand each other.